Serious, Redditors who work at cemeteries and graveyards, what strange and scary stuff have you witnessed? My mom and stepdad were the caretakers of a small cemetery for about 10 years. All of us kids, six between the two of them, helped out at one point or another. One summer, I was helping my mom with mowing and upkeep. It was a super hot summer, so we would try to go and get the mowing done early before the heat became too unbearable. Well, we had trouble getting the truck going one day, so we ended up starting a little later than usual and were unable to finish up everything that day. My mom had an appointment the next morning, and the day after that, it was supposed to rain, so I told her I would go up early the next morning and finish up the trimming with a weed eater. So, it's about 7 in the morning, and I am listening to music with my headphones and going around the headstones. Everything was going well until I got to the oldest section of the cemetery. That part was on a small slope of a hill. Once you got to the bottom and looked up, you couldn't see the road, but you could see it again once you were about halfway up. When I finished up the last headstone, I turned off my equipment and started back up the hill. I glanced up in time to see a little girl in a pretty red dress. She was running and disappeared behind a large headstone. I figured her parents were visiting another grave and the little girl ran off to entertain herself. It was around 9 a.m. at this point. I got to the top of the hill, and there were no cars or people around. The cemetery wasn't really close to any houses, and the girl was too nicely dressed to have walked out there. I looked around and shouted for her to come out. I was able to see the headstone she ran behind, and I would have seen her if she ran out again. I couldn't find her anywhere. I called my mom and told her what was going on and asked if I should call the police and tell them about this little girl. She looked to be about three or four years old, so she certainly shouldn't be by herself. My mom asked me if she was wearing a red dress. I said, yes, why? So, she proceeds to nonchalantly tell me that it was just the ghost girl. Now, everyone who knows me, knows that I don't mess with ghosts. I asked why she didn't tell me there was a ghost in the cemetery. She said she needed my help and was afraid I wouldn't go up if Elle thought it was haunted. Now granted, I probably would have been more leery of the place, but knowing no one else could help her, I would have still helped her that summer, but I would have made sure I wasn't there by myself. I still go there sometimes as I have relatives buried there, but I am always with someone. Fortunately, I never saw any other ghosts, and I have never seen the little ghost girl ever again. I used to work as a park ranger in a cemetery in London which has been converted into a nature reserve. It's in a very ghetto area. The local kids nicknamed it the forest. Regularly, we'd find ammunition, knives, and occasionally pistols hidden in the memorials and gravestones, and the police would be called to collect them. A friend once found a backpack full of Molotov cocktails prepared. I never saw a pistol myself, only once did I have the honor of finding something. I found a plastic bag stuffed behind a collapsed monument, and inside it had a load of shotgun shells. It was terrifying for me because you have no idea if someone is watching you or aware that you've just found their stash. The police come, you have to have to show them where it is and that further highlights your involvement to any of the local kids watching you. That particular park people avoid as soon as the sun goes down. Strange people visiting. I worked at the cemetery Jimi Hendrix is buried at, so lots of weed and people hanging around. We found a dead homeless man behind a mausoleum, smelled him first. One time, getting ready to bury a person, we dug a grave. It was in a section of the graveyard that had very old burials, 100 plus years, so wooden caskets. My foreman at the time was squaring off the hole with a shovel, then he saw a skull looking right at him. He quickly and quietly pushed it farther into the dirt and told us not to say anything. If the office people had found out, it would have been a whole thing. Digging it up, trying to figure out who it was, etc. never saw a ghost, but some of the old timers say they did. Not sure if I believe them. Lots of other stories, but that stands out. I take care of a small family mausoleum. The family that is buried there has no living descendants, so it falls to me to clean out the facility and replace the flowers inside the building. I also make sure that there's no damage to the mausoleum. I've become very acquainted with the family that is buried inside. One day, as I was closing up my office, my phone rang, and when I answered it, there was a very agitated woman on the other end. She was very clearly under the influence of something. She asked me repeatedly if I knew where Jane Smith was. Jane Smith has been buried in the mausoleum since the early 1900s. I asked her why she needed to know. The woman very calmly asked me to go to the mausoleum to double check that Jane was still there because she believed that she was her. I assured her that I was pretty sure Jane was still peacefully buried, and our phone conversation ended a few moments later. Drugs and alcohol are a hell of a thing, 
but it still creeped me out enough that I don't answer my phone after 5 p.m. any longer, and I make sure someone is with me when I go to the cemetery. There was an old cemetery next to my cousin's house. Next to one of the headstones, there was a hole from a groundhog or something. There were scraps of old fabric coming o'er of the hole. I used to mow the lawn at a cemetery as part of my summer job. I always volunteered because it was the only place, I could work with my shirt off and try to fight my farmer's tan. Anyway, the only creepy thing is that coffins must break and fill with dirt over time because once in a while, you'll be walking and sink up to your knee in a small sinkhole on top of a grave. Didn't really bother me unless I was walking at a good pace, but some of the other people would get freaked out by that. Back when I was a teenager, I went touring the local cemeteries with a friend, and after walking to the edge of the lawn and one to look down at a forested ravine, I realized I wasn't standing on the soil, but wood. Turns out an unmarked grave had been partially exposed by erosion, and I'd miss seeing the casket timbers among fallen leaves. Very thankful it was sturdy enough to hold up my weight for a moment. I am a recreational genealogist. Much of my free time is spent in cemeteries in order to document headstones and map the area for records. I was taken by surprise when I was working late, and the sun had gone down. I began seeing these lights across the cemetery. The cemetery was in the middle of nowhere, literally surrounded by miles of cornfields. At first, I dismissed it as light bugs, but soon saw that they were too large and too steady. Shortly after, I started freaking out because I thought that maybe I wasn't alone and it was a flashlight that someone was using, and I wasn't alone, at night, walking back to my car in this creepy cemetery. Of course, my panic starts rising, and I'm convinced that there is something nefarious at play. I ran to my car, which wasn't easy with all of my equipment. My blinders were on, because I had one goal, and I wasn't going to get tripped up by seeing something more worrisome as I tried to get out of there alive. My mind planted everything from demons to grave robbers to other criminals. This was about a decade ago, solar light bulbs were becoming a popular decoration next to burial sites. With it being a newer type of decoration, I wasn't aware of them. It was 100% a few solar lights. My first job as a teenager was at a cemetery. It was a large cemetery with a full-time, unionized workforce. Two to three funerals a day, and because of the Jewish section, seven days a week. Never saw or experienced anything strange or scary. In the shoulder seasons, I used to go in after school and push a mower for a couple of hours. Apparently, it was a popular place for people cheating on their spouses to meet up. I did see some people in their grief jumping on coffins as they were lowering into the ground. This is not something scary but rather interesting, but I will say it anyway. In the graveyard near where I live, there is this tilted road that leads further into the cemetery. The strange thing is that, apparently, gravity does not affect this road. For example, if you put something like a bottle or something and push it downwards, you would expect it to go down the road except that it does not, it goes up the road like if some unseen force is pulling it, and I really can't explain why or how this is happening. I used to work for a small company that would help set up monuments and cemeteries all over the states of VA and WV. The only strange thing I can really remember ever happening was when I went to this one small, unsettling town that had a real twilight zone feel to it. The guy whose brother we just set up a footstone for handed me a little brown cross on a string necklace. Later that night, that thing turned blood red. I think I still have that cursed item somewhere. As for scary stuff, I ran into some skinheads while lost in West Virginia. As a brown dude, it was quite the scare. I just noped out before the three did anything other than size me up. Back in the day, graveyards were used as parks. People would picnic, kids would play, then they started building city parks, so the practice subsided. That whole concept reminds me of Dia de los Muertos. I personally have had bag lunches in one of my local cemeteries, especially in an old section overlooking a lake. I did it for the peace and quiet, and view. I once worked for a graveyard in Florida for a couple months. One day they were digging a grave and went home early. They left the excavator there and, on my lunch, break I was sitting near it when I heard someone banging on the machine. Now, this ain't it settling, no, this was someone taking a hammer and hitting it on the machine. I figured someone was working on it, but it just kept hitting. After 7 minutes or so, I walk over to see what's going on and, nothing. No one was there, and it stopped when I approached the machine. I also live down the street from this graveyard, and I go by it constantly. One time I saw a lady roaming around the graveyard at night. I don't know if it was an actual person or not, but it creeped me out a fair bit. 
Gravedigger here. Nothing scary or weird ever, but about once a week, I chase people off that were either shooting up. Had a couple odds because about 60 of the cemeteries I do are in very drug-heavy neighborhoods. One time, we had a woman shoot herself at the top of the cemetery while we were down below. Other than that, the ghosts and ghouls leave us alone even on late nights. My dad was a cemetery superintendent, so we were in residence there from the time I started high school. I lived there with my parents for about 5 years. My dad worked in the same cemetery, and lived there for 35 years. There's nothing strange or scary in a cemetery. They can actually be very peaceful, idyllic places. Anything that would be strange or scary is brought there by your own preconceptions and expectations. You can stretch the symbols of old worn tombstones, the shapes of trees in the seasons, the mists and fogs of weather, to scare yourself. It was human, very much alive, agency that was scary. It was 160 acres in the middle of the city. Tons of kids roamed that place at night. They drank and messed all over the place. They also committed acts of vandalism. One night, a group went through and knocked over 160 tombstones. Don't work in a graveyard, but I was staying with friends who live at the top of a hill, with a graveyard being the main route, not for cars, down. I rode a bike and passed one night cycling down the hill through the graveyard that it was easier to cycle with my lights off, as the difference between the light and pitch black was so extreme that I couldn't see anything around the lit area at all, my lights aren't great. So, there I am, cycling along in the pitch black through a graveyard on a fairly steep hill. I kinda get a bit freaked or every so often and so would stop and turn the light on, have a look around, check I was on the path still and then carry on. One time I did this, I discovered that I was less than a foot away from falling into an open grave. I did some restoration work with a group of miners or prospectors at the Granite City Graveyard in the Kootenays of British Columbia. Someone went through the cemetery and desecrated every grave they could locate. Wooden head plates graffiti ed, any visible burial dug up. There were bones sticking up everywhere, and it was infuriating. Whoever did it wasn't just looking for treasure. They wanted to destroy the place. I also once discovered a bunch of Chinese burials near Summit Creek by Barkerville. I was digging on bedrock, and these piles of hand-stacked rocks on either side of the creek had little mounds on them. It turns out I accidentally dug into one of them and had quite a shock. That spot, in particular, is really creepy. It feels like you are being watched and judged by people all around you. In the morning, the area is usually filled with mist or fog, and you can almost pick out shapes moving around in it. I am sure it was my imagination. I don't work at a cemetery, but I do have a story. Just outside my hometown, there is a small castle. Brief history, it was a mod in the 1100s and slowly progressed to a castle and Georgian residence throughout time. There is a small burial ground outside of it, and me and my friends decided to investigate the local rumors about a shining light that shone in a powerless section of the place. Anyways we got there, saw the light and roamed the grounds for somewhere near an hour. It was a very uneasy place, so we decided to leave. We got attacked by a flock of birds. When I got back to my car outside the grounds to drive home, I got an unexpected call from my mother, asking was I alright and that she had gotten a very bad feeling about me crossing her mind. I let her know I was fine and would be home in the next 15 minutes not to be worrying about nothing. Cut to about 5 minutes later after I had ended the call and was beginning my drive home. I was pulling out onto the main road, and a car with no lights on, in the pitch dark, came and smashed into the side of my car. Nobody was seriously hurt. If the car with no lights had been 5 seconds later, she would probably have killed my friend in the following car as she would have hit his driver's door rather than my rear door. I will always remember that night. It felt as though we shouldn't have ever been there, and an incident was bound to happen with the feeling around that place. Have never been there since. This was about 6 years ago. I was doing sales at a cemetery, and had to lock up the mausoleum at night and make sure no families were in there. One night I was walking through and heard something. It was gone in an instant, but it was a scratching kind of sound. It sounded exactly like you expect, something clawing their way out of a mausoleum would sound. I almost jumped out of my skin and ran out of there like a little baby, but I didn't want to turn around, the sound was behind me. After about three days, and no further sounds, I turned around and realized it was the automatic air freshener spritzing the place to not smell like the dead. My grandfather told me his story of why he stopped digging graves as well as maintaining the area. He swears he heard talking one day at the grave of his old primary school teacher. He goes to take a look to see what's going on, and there is no one there. 
He turns his back and swears on his life. He heard his old teacher's voice calling out to him about his poor life choices. My granddad went and started a florist afterward. Business is booming, but he still fears that place. My great-grandfather worked at a graveyard sometime after World War I. They still had those bells that were set in place in case someone was buried alive. My grandfather would talk about how his father would come home shaken up about how he swears someone is playing tricks on him cause a few of the bells would ring almost every now and then. After he dug them up a few times, he mostly ignored them unless the sound came from a body buried that day. My dad cut the grass in the church cemetery just down the road from our old home. It had graves dating back to the 1850s, and a creek rock wall surrounding it and the church. One day while he was cutting grass, he turned around, and a little girl in a dress was sitting on one of the headstones. He promptly decided to leave and didn't return for several hours. This was in a fairly rural area where everyone knew each other, and no one had a girl that age, within walking distance. Once I was cleaning in one with my aunts and mom as part of church lady work or something. They used to clean the church and the cemetery like once a month or so. We're picking up dead flowers and raking leaves in it when a truck drives by, going like 85 miles per hour on a 45 miles per hour country back road. About a half hour later, a deputy cruiser comes through with its lights on, followed by an ambulance. Turns out the guy was a member of our congregation and crashed about a mile past us, was killed instantly. He was later buried roughly 10 feet from where I was standing when he passed. I used to work at a cemetery with a crematory, and for me, the strangest thing was working in the crematory. Not that burning human bodies was particularly unsettling, but after they are burned. When you remove the remains from an oven after incineration, there are bits and pieces of the human body that don't get entirely consumed by the flames. It's very common to have chunks or charred pieces of bone left over. Those pieces then have to be put through a grinder to turn them into a powder before they can be returned to the rest of the ashes for placement in an urn or box. At the place where I worked, the grinder was still a manual piece of equipment which meant you were grinding up granny's bones by hand. Eventually, you get used to these things, but it sure took me a while. Not too much scary stuff went on when I worked there except for the time we found a decapitated rabbit head on one of the graves. Now, more than likely, it was a hawk that happened to drop it, but seeing a clean, untouched rabbit head with no body or entrails in sight was fun to speculate on. It was just so clean and perfect you'd swear it was done with a knife and placed there by someone with purpose, but who knows. The only other thing worth mentioning was from before I was there, but some of the guys told me about a voodoo looking thing on a grave. They said there was a bag or jar of some kind, and inside it was a lot of things, like a dollar and a doll with needles through it. All of it was soaked through, maybe because it was put like that or because of the environment, I'm not sure, but they said they got the heebie-jeebies from having to throw that one out.